Good morning, everybody. My name is Tom Frank. I am the executive director for the Center for Entrepreneurship and adjunct assistant professor in the College of Engineering, which is an incredibly long title for somebody who was an English lit major. Um, the purpose of today's class is to have fun. You guys get the opportunity more often than most students to hear these stories from some profound and important entrepreneurs. We're not going to do that today. We are just going to have a good time. So the first thing I would like to in do is introduce my fabulous prize hostesses. She has her master's degree in education and has traveled the world with her fighter pilot husband. We find her now in Ann Arbor where she is the CFE's top administration gun. Please welcome Christine Gordon. She was born in Venezuela, but don't let her beguiling and lovely looks fool you. She has the sharpest financial mind and is hands down the best CFO I have ever hired in my 30-year career. Please welcome Christina Sanchez. Now, the one assignment that you had for this class was you had to submit a problem. Why are we starting with problems? We are starting with problems because that is more often than not from whence inspiration springs. Yes, sometimes people develop something really cool or invent something by accident or on purpose, but more often than not, innovation comes out of need, either a need to solve a really simple problem or a really important one. Now, I want to put up a couple of qualifiers you will be participating in today's class. I will butcher your name. I may butcher your problem. If I do either of those things, let it roll off your back. The thing that we're going to do very, very quickly is we are going to go through an NCAA style elimination of 32 of these problems that were selected at random, where I will call your name and both problems, and you all will vote by a show of hands which problem you think should advance. Just so we are clear here, the two finalists today are playing for an incredibly cool prize worth over 300 bucks. So if you didn't give a, little, a lot of thought to your problem, shame on you. Once we get through these problems, and I'm going to be going really quickly, we're going to get on with the rest of the game. Uh, if you are not here when your name or problem are called, too bad, you are automatically eliminated. All righty. First up, uh, we have uh, Edward Young and Z Aluermi. Are you both here? Okay. Edward's problem is he wishes there were a way to create substitute sleep. Z would like some sort of solution for the price and time commitment of dating, including flash restaurant specials and cheap happy hours so he can look like a million bucks but not spend it. I'd like to know who wishes they had more energy and there were a substitute for sleep by a show of hands. And who wishes there were an easier way for dating and commitment? Okay, I'm afraid sleep sub is moving on. Devish Shaw and Alec Chasman. Are you guys both here? Are my guys both here? Devish? Got it, okay. Uh, what about Alec Chasman? Perfect. Okay, Devish is universal access to the World Wide Web. Alec is, people don't know what it's like to work somewhere until it's too late. So, <laughs> who's voting for universal access is a more important problem? Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, not knowing what works like, we'll put the hands up just to be sure. Do we have, is that a, is that a, all right, I think it's going to be, uh, I think uh, work takes it. Sharu Devwadi and Colin Mahar. Both here? Okay. Uh, problem number one, braille signs on walls are not effective or helping sight-impaired people. And problem number two is that we need better bionic prosthetics, that prosthetics technology should have advanced more sophisticated at this point in time. So show of hands about braille signs. Prosthetics. Prosthetics takes it. Okay. David Brustar and Steven Domgalski. Both here? Awesome. 
Okay, I saw three hands. Maybe there are three of you named that. Problem number one, our US tax code is cumbersome and needs an overhaul. Somebody was having a bad day in finance. Problem number two, most people never get a chance to see our planet. In other words, the vast majority of the population is locked in and doesn't get a real chance to explore. Do we care more about our tax code or landlocked citizens? Tax code. Wow, we have a lot of Ross students. Okay. <laughs> and the other problem was uh, not getting to travel. Prize hostess. One wins. Tax code takes it. Okay. Stay with me. Matthew Lee and Maya Crossman. Problem number one, Intro introverts are undervalued in classes. In other words, all the loudmouths like me get better grades and focused attention. Problem number two is that information on basic laws and human rights is not easily accessible to all. Do we care more about introverts or people that are denied their basic rights? Let's hear it for the shy guys. <laughs> okay. Shy Guys is not going to take this one. I'm sorry for those of you who feel gypped by that. Come see me after class. Uh, and Human Rights wins. Next up, A April Vela and Alex Spaulding. OK, problem number one is gender bias in hiring, particularly in technology. Problem number two is that Alex needs an auto budget to track spending and keep Alex on course, because apparently uh, Alex is not getting frequent enough messages from his family to do that. So do we care more about gender bias in hiring, or would we like to see the problem of, let me know how much I have left to spend more this week? Gender bias, show of hands. OK, and what about auto budget? I'm afraid gender bias takes it. All right, um, Josh, Karn, Safferstein, and Julie Lauren Brown. Problem number one, men's fashion has evolved, but gee whiz, men's jewelry is still super ugly. Problem number two, there's a lack of fresh produce on campus for students that don't have cars. So are you feeling it more for ugly men's jewelry or for a lack of fruits and vegetables? Jewelry. Oh. Uh, Sorry, guy. I'm afraid it looks like Protus is going to take it without a vote. All right. Rolling through. We're almost halfway there. Uh, ID theft requires an electronic solution that is always with you is problem number one from Alexandra Alberici. Uh, and problem number two is Aditya Pramod, disposability and particularly making trash decompose faster. So would we like a solution for ID theft that was electronic in nature, or would we like our Jimmy John's bag to rot faster? All in favor of identity theft. OK, rot that bag. Rot the bag. All right. Vic Andrade and Sloan Martin. I can't wait for the answer on this one. Problem number one. The demand for medical marijuana and cannabis greatly exceeds the currently available supply. <laughs> Problem number two is a lack of part-time jobs on campus for students and finding them, maybe because you're looking for that cannabis. So <laughs> I'm going to ask you now, are you more concerned about the cannabis problem or finding part-time jobs on campus? Cannabis. You are being filmed. Your parents can access it. <laughs> part-time jobs on campus. Part-time jobs on campus wins. By the way, part-time jobs on campus person, there is a website and a job fair uh, that will address this solution with over 2,000 campus jobs. Find me after campus, I'll give you the hookup. Okay, Christina Ordonez and Ann Parsons. Christina's with concern because there is no easy, secure way to buy or sell sports tickets for students. Student sports tickets. Facebook groups don't work. Interestingly enough, perhaps she should hook it up with Anne because Anne is really distressed over the fact that cooler technologies have not advanced in the last 10 years, and why can't they invent something that's lighter weight that carries more, maybe solar powered? So would you rather have a secure place to trade tickets 
or a cooler that was solar powered and had a larger capacity? Ticket site problem? Okay, what about cooler? Ticks? All right, ticks wins. Nathaniel McKinnon and uh, looks like Benny Ning. All right, problem number one. There is just no way to get a darn reliable and consistent haircut in different geographies. The problem is you need an at-home solution, sort of like you could just put on your head and know what style you need. Problem number two is there's no safe way to leave your study materials if you need to take a bio break without passing or packing everything up. So would we like a solution for inconsistent haircuts? Show of hands. Mostly the guys. Okay, um, or would we like a way to keep our items secure when we take a bio break? Bio break wins, and that's going forward. Ryan Tish and Margot Crete. Uh, Ryan's just really upset about wet footwear. You know, sometimes he takes his flip-flops into the shower. They stay wet all day. On the other hand, Margot is terribly distressed that there is no coffee delivery service on campus. Do we care more about wet footwear or no coffee in the car? Wet footwear? Really? What's up with that? Why did you vote for that? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> okay. Uh, coffee service delivery. That's going to take it. Okay. Hang in there. Libby Griffith and Yuling Liu. Wow. Uh, Libby's upset because moving furniture is a pain and requires multiple people. And uh, Yuling is mad because of food security or lack thereof. In other words, McDonald's is making your burger with some long past due dead cows, uh, and Lord knows what those GMOs are. So do you care more about the hassle of moving furniture today, or do you care more about uh, eating expired food? Furniture. Okay, you guys should all get together and help each other out. GMOs, there we go. Number 27, uh, Lisa Lyons. How do we prevent student anxiety and depression? Not treat it, how do we, how do we prevent it? And Cameron Grassley, which is that uh, the university gyms are always overcrowded, you have to wait. Who wants to stand around for 45 minutes for a workout? So, compassionate crowd, those that wish we could find a way to prevent depression and anxiety, raise your hands. Those who are sick about not being able to get a basketball court on North U. Uh, anxiety is going to take it. Don't get stressed out about it. Okay, rounding third, David Hermanoff or Connor Matthews? Okay, problem number one is that darn TV remote is always disappearing. Problem number two is we need to expedite approvals for new drugs and medical devices. Wow, isn't this a binary choice? So, is it a more important problem that we have slow regulatory processes for life-saving drugs or the fact that our TV remote sometimes disappears? TV remote? Oh, come on. It's a free country. I'm going to say that uh, Med's going to take it, but let's see a show of hands just to be sure. Awesome. And finally, Gregory McMurdy was having an existential moment. Where are you, Gregory? His problem is not knowing what problems to solve. Okay? And Joshua Linton, where are you? His problem was counterfeit pharmaceutical drugs. Because if you can't find any cannabis and then you get some really bad anxiety medication, you're in serious trouble. So, are we voting for the existential not knowing what problem? Or are we voting for bad pharma? All right, now you guys know all of these problems, so we're going to bang this out as fast as we can. Pharma takes it. Here we go. Uh, substitute sleep or uh, finding out where you want to work too late. Substitute sleep. Is that it? I think it takes it. OK. Uh, it looks like, uh, was it Braille signs or bionics at one? Bionics. Bionic prosthetics or a new tax code? Prosthetics. Tax code. I think prosthetics takes it. OK. 
uh, basic human rights laws, easy access for all, or gender bias? Ooh, this will be a good one. Okay, basic human rights, gender bias. Sorry, ladies. Okay, human rights takes it. Ugly men's jewelry. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, um, lack of fresh produce or disposability and decomposition. Uh, fresh produce on campus. Wow, okay. Uh, decomposition. I think it's produce, isn't it? Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Part-time jobs on campus or easy way to sell tickets. Part-time jobs, finding them. Problem. Campus, selling sports tickets. Ticks wins. Okay. Uh, let's see. No safe place to leave your things or no coffee delivery service. Things? Coffee service. Things? Okay. Let's see. Uh, I don't even know what that one is. Oh, food security, GMO, or uh, depression and anxiety. GMO, food problem, depression and anxiety. Sadly, sadness wins. Okay. Finally, uh, need to expedite approvals for medicine or counterfeit drugs. Kind of the same problem. Which one's going to take it? Uh, need to expedite medicine regulation, counterfeit drugs. It's going to be med. Okay. We are now substitute sleep versus, uh, it looks like, uh, uh, prosthetics. Uh, sleep? Sleep wins. Okay. And here we have human rights versus fresh produce. Human rights? Fresh produce. Human rights. Okay, uh, let's see. Ticket solution versus, uh, what was this one? It looks like uh, no place to leave your stuff. Tickets or ticket solution? No place to leave your stuff. Stuff wins. Okay, anxiety and depression versus medical approvals. Anxiety and depression. Medical approvals. Okay, we are getting to our two finalists. Sleep deprivation or the access or lack thereof of basic laws and human rights. Sleep. Okay. Human rights. Sleep is one of our finalists. And finally, no place to book your stuff when you have to pee or uh, advancements in regulations and regulatory for medical devices and new drugs. So who cares more about a secure place for their backpack? Who wants drugs? Okay. So it's drugs versus sleep. <laughs> Draw your own conclusions. Oh, lovely prize hostess. Will the two people who are responsible for those problems please come to the front of the stage? I believe they do know. Okay. One of you is leaving with this fabulous waterproof GoPro camera today. But before you do, you're going out with a peer lead. And here's what you have to do. You have until 10 minutes before class is over to get on camera. They have pre-programmed films that are going to be streaming back live. As many entrepreneurs as you can find in that time period to say that they are an entrepreneur and why they think they are an entrepreneur. Those are your rules. Those are your peer leads. They are ready to go. May the best man win. The person who gets the most people on camera takes home the GoPro. Okay? Go. You're on your own. Okay, now we're going to keep moving on here. Yeah, rumble through the crowd. Damn, I should have worked harder on that problem. Okay. We've already talked about that. Round one is what's your problem? And just like Price is right, I am now going to ask five of you to come on down. Julia Tang, Alec Dolick, Courtney Fightsome, Amanda Eups, and Jacob Myers. Come on down. Are you here? Come on, you guys, hustle it up. Now, for those of you who have grandmas and may have seen the show, The Price is Right, you can just hang out here in front. 
what we're going to be saying is that the one of you who comes closest without going over gets to come up on stage with me and play a cooler game for a cooler prize. So, the current valuation of Facebook is Forty-five billion. Fifty billion. Uh, Twenty-seven billion. <laughs> Hang on, you'll get your turn. The correct answer is one hundred and eighty-five point four billion. I believe you're up here on stage, buddy. Interestingly enough, you guys can hang out in these chairs. You're going to get another shot. Interestingly enough, in two thousand and six, there were plenty of offers to buy Facebook early, but in two thousand and six. Yahoo made a $1 billion offer, which Facebook's board of directors very much wanted Mark to take. Mark persuaded the board not to take that offer, but they said, if Yahoo comes back with even a small adjustment of $1.1 billion, you are going to take this offer. Terry Semmel, who was Yahoo's CEO at the time, said, not a dollar more, and boy, did he regret that, as we'll find when we guess Yahoo's valuation a little later. All right. Here's the game. Who was I at 25? Do you know who Mark Cuban is? You have three choices, and the object of this game is you have to get more right than wrong. At 25, Mark Cuban was A, a bartender, B, working on the broadband delivery company he did eventually sell to Yahoo, or C, selling friends college furniture on eBay for a profit. B. He was a bartender. Okay. Howard Schultz. Howard Schultz was A, a male model, B, a Xerox copier salesman, or C, traveling the world by surfboard. Xerox copier salesman? You are correct, sir. He's got one right. Marissa Mayer was one, completing the only triple degree that had ever been awarded at Stanford at that time, two, employee number 20 at Google, or three, working on a social startup for young women called, hey, sassy girl. <laughs> Google. You are correct. You got two out of three so far. Martha Stewart was A, a housewife, B, a produce buyer for a supermarket chain, or C, a stockbroker. Stockbroker. This is for all the money. I don't want to make you nervous. You know who Tim Allen is, right? Tim Allen, Michigan native, was A, highway patrol officer in Ypsilanti, B, a struggling New York actor waiting tables and working off Broadway, or C, incarcerated for drug dealing. If you are not sure about the answer, you are welcome to ask the audience since it's either way for you right now. Going with C? That is correct. He was incarcerated for drug dealing. <laughs> you want a $10 Amazon card and a $10 Starbucks card, and you can sit down. Good job. Now, <laughs> the key takeaway here, and this is really important for entrepreneurs, who you are at 25 doesn't define who you are for the rest of your life. At 25, I worked at Procter & Gamble. I was an advertising executive. At 30, I was a television producer in Hollywood. At 35, I was running a large public internet company in Seattle. I know it sounds like I can't keep a job. That's why I'm a teacher now. So, um, but the point is, as entrepreneurs, you will find yourselves on a journey. So don't lock yourself in. Be open to possibilities. OK, I need somebody else in contestant row. Where'd my blue card go? I'm going to pick you, because you're on the end of the aisle. Come on down, sir. Everybody up. You get another shot here. Come on up. It's just like the real show. All right. The current valuation of Google is? Two hundred billion. Two twenty billion. Two twenty billion. Four 
400 billion. 400 billion. 500 billion. 500 billion. She's going for broke. <laughs> the correct answer is 335 billion. I believe that's you then, yes? See what happens when you sit close to the front? Come on up. You guys sit down again. This game is called Greatest Failures. I'm going to give you clues and we'll see if you can figure out who this greatest failure is. These are from people who later went on to be quite successful. It's a little hard to see. He's an Italian artist, inventor, and engineer born in 1452. Do you have a guess, sir? Hey, chill out here. It's hard up here on stage. Many inventions included an adding machine, armored vehicles, and solar-powered apparatus. Do you have a guess? He is most famous for painting the Mona Lisa. Audience? All right, we're not going to give you that one. Next up. He is an American inventor with over a thousand patents in his name. Do you have a guess? Many people think he actually invented the light bulb, but what he did is he invented the first commercially viable incandescent bulb. Yeah, you got one. All right, Edison. This is a hard game. It's cool. And finally, my company was founded in 1976 by three people but when we incorporated in 1977, one founder sold his shares back for $800. This product almost killed my company as well as portable CD audio players and speakers in the 1990s. We are the number one brand in the world surpassing Coca-Cola in 2013. Audience? Apple. That's correct. This is the Apple Newton, one of their biggest failures. We're going to give you a consolation Jimmy John's card and say, good job, nice play. <laughs> What's our takeaway? Failing is like going to the bathroom. Everybody does it, but nobody really likes to talk about it. Also, it's really an important opportunity for you guys to learn something. I know you hear during these weekly sessions with the successful entrepreneurs how important fi failing is, and it's really easy to talk about that when you cruise in here on your private jet, as opposed to when you're trying to scrape by enough money to work on your startup. But you should just approach any project that you're dealing with in this space, is that there are going to be mistakes, there are going to be learning, and make sure that one of those failures or, or mistakes is not the one that tips you into the point of quitting. It should be the one that pushes you farther towards succeeding. All right. Heavy, heavy, heavy philosophizing over. Let's bring somebody else down. Uh, let's see Nicole Eggert and maybe Edwin Stanley join us in contestant row. Come on, guys. Are you here? Just know if, that you, if you swiped in and you don't make it down here, I'm going to know. Okay, you guys know the drill. You're up again. I can't let you go first again. Okay. <laughs> We're going to let you go first. The current valuation of Twitter is? Oh, gosh. Um, $30 billion? $30 billion. $50 billion. $50 billion. $124 billion. $124 billion. $150 billion. $150 billion? Uh, $80 billion. $80 billion. I'm afraid you guys high-sided this one a little. It's 29.5. Is there anybody who didn't go over? Okay, who was the lowest? Come on up. You're Nicole, young lady, is that correct? You're Nicole? Devin, what was your problem today? Um, I talked about the internet being clogged up with. Okay, the reason I asked you that is that one thing that we didn't talk about is that you guys had problems that were in clumps. A lot of you cared about technology like that and the impact it's going to have on your life, positive and negative. Uh, a lot of you cared about the rising cost of education, and a lot of you also did, in fact, care about human rights issues. So I'm, I'm glad that some, some problems that were at least serious in nature 
made it through part of the brackets. All right, let's play a game. Secret Lives, true or false? Sergey Brin is a gym rat. Do you know who he is? Founder of Google? That is, in fact, true. Mark Zuckerberg is a ballroom dancer. You are correct again. Brian Chesky, do you know what company he founded? Airbnb. Was he an exotic dancer in college? I don't know. Look at that photo. Think hard on this one. <laughs> I think it might work, but... <laughs> oh, man. Uh, can I ask the audience? You may certainly ask the audience. False is the correct answer. Finally, Twitter founder Dick Costello is a stand-up comedian. That is absolutely true. Let's give her a round. She did a great job of this. We'll do the pricing now. You did such a good job. We're going to mix it up here. You're going to start off with a $25 Walmart card, but would you like to keep the card? Or would you like to go for what Christina is holding in the box? Recognize, recognize, recognize here that the box could have a little or a lot. So, and keep in mind that entrepreneurship is about risk, hint, hint. So, <laughs> This is just like a real game show. <laughs> you have to do what makes you comfortable. All right, she's trade for the box. Let's see what you got. You got a $50 gift card. You doubled your money. I know you guys can all read, but that was the takeaway from that last game, is that um, even the most successful entrepreneurs have to have outside lint interests. You know, Mark Zuckerberg is not a ballroom dancer, but he has this freakish fascination with his white fluffy dog, the Beast, who he has pictures of all over his office because he's got his own little obsessions. Um, sometimes when you are working so tirelessly to make your dream a reality, you can lose sight of people and things that matter to you. In fact, one of the problems that did not make it through the randomizer to the brackets was maintaining relationships with friends and family, which can be a real challenge for entrepreneurs. So make sure that you have an outside life or an outside interest and that you pursue that with as much passion as you do your venture moralizing over. One more person down in contestant row. How about Kaylee Clulo? Kaylee? All right, you guys, you know the drill. But this time it's Snapchat. Come on up. I want to hear your things. What is Snapchat's current valuation? We'll start with you because you're new. And the answer is 10 billion on the money. You are on your way up here, bro. But look what else. That's with zero revenue. How often does that happen? Not very. So we'll see what happens with Snapchat. Oh, you have a really hard game. I'm sorry in advance because you struggled to get up here from contestants row. <laughs> Here's what you are going to do. You are going to, we're going to spin the board around. Let's, here. 
Do 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 do. Each of the five entrepreneurs up there received what they said was their best advice. First question is, do you know who each of these five are? No worries on that. Jeff is the CEO of LinkedIn. Spencer is the CEO of Zillow. Do you know what Zillow is? It's a big real estate website. So. Um, Someday, when you're settling down, you're looking for a house, want to find the best price. Craig is the founder of Craigslist. Eric is from Google. And Ben is from Pinterest. Okay? So, these five pieces of advice were bestowed upon these five individuals at some point in time. On the board are their faces. You have one minute to match the advice with the individual. Audience, feel free to help him out. I gotta check on this. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. You get three attempts at this and I will tell you how many you have correct. Don't overthink it. You have zero right. <laughs> Try again. Oh, wait, you know what? I lied to you. That's correct. You have two right. <laughs> I'm waiting now. I can't give you all the answers. You get one more attempt. <laughs> you still only have two right. You are correct. <laughs> yes, he got it all right. <clears throat> Do we have another surprise box ready? We have two. Now, would you like her $25 Walmart card and a $10 Amazon card, or would you like what Christina is holding in one of those two boxes? So it's the... Uh, And the moral of the story is, always listen to your CFO. <laughs> she was really trying to help you out on that. Sometimes when you're a founder, you don't really want to listen to your CFO. I'm not going to make you haul this all the way out here. 
All right. We have time for one more person down in contestant row, I think. And that person is going to be Madison Speck. All right. Here we go, guys. Uh, by the way, what was uh, Tom's important message on that last game? You're going to get a lot of advice, a lot of advice. And oftentimes, it's going to be conflicting advice. My suggestion and recommendation to you is that you track it. You literally log the advice. So if you're stuck on a problem, ask a half dozen people whose opinions you either respect or don't how they want to handle that and track those responses and start to look for trend lines. Because otherwise, otherwise you're going to run into a situation where somebody says, oh, you should be working on your business plan, or oh, you shouldn't do that until you get your minimally viable product ready, or oh, you should go get a job at Walmart because this isn't going to happen. So try and look for trend lines, because most of the advice that those people said was their best advice was kind of generic common sense advice. So make sure that you keep that in mind. All right, let's play. One more round. Here we go. Poor Yahoo could have bought Facebook for a billion dollars. But now I need to know from the five of you, what do you think Yahoo's current valuation is? Uh, 30 billion. 8 billion. Uh, 40 billion. 41 billion. 50. Shockingly, this was the closest that you all came. But I'm afraid our newcomer got it right without going over. 38.54 billion, come on up. What's your name? And what was your problem? Uh, the Michigan app needs to have better bus route information. Sorry you didn't randomize into that 32. Sounds like you could be running around for a GoPro. All right, here's your game. You ready? Who am I? I'm going to give you a clue. Chill out, Madison. It gets easier. I was born in South Africa in 1971, and I have created two of the coolest companies on the planet. I think I might have heard the answer. <laughs> Elon Musk with Tesla and SpaceX. Way to go, audience, helping a girl out. All right. Next entrepreneur, I am, oh, come on, take a look. It's not that hard. Maybe it's perspective. Should we come down a stage so you can really reflect on this? OK. I am Professor Frank's personal hero, and I have been known to disrupt more industries than most people in the world. My motto for life is have no regrets. Oh, come on, Madison. Try a little here or you're getting an Amazon card. Come on. There you go. Okay. Next up. Got it. Now, I want you to try with this one, Madison. I want you to dig deep. You may not know this tiny version of my face, but I am one of the largest e-commerce internet success stories of Internet 1.0. It all started with books, but lately it's been all about drones. I'm not Santa Claus, but I bet most of you have received a package from me. There you go, Jeff Bezos. We're going to give it to you. All right, you are our last contestant, so I am going to ask you the same question. Would you like a $25 Walmart card and a $10 Amazon card? Or would you like to go for what's in one of the boxes? Just remember, on these shows, there's always a clinker at some point. Uh, big box. She's going for the big box. Are you sure?
<laughs> you stay here right for a second. All of you that were in contestant row are going to get a thank you. I have two Amazons, two Starbucks, and two Jimmy John's or more. So I will let you pass these out. Thank all of you who played today. Do we have our two students back? We appear to have our two students back. I need to confer with our judges. Stand by. The suspense is killing even me. Gentlemen, please remind me your names and your problems. Edward Young, and my problem is the sleep aid. Connor Matthews and expediting the medical uh, product process. And the winner is, with 14 interviews, Connor Matthews, congratulations. You're not going home empty-handed. You're getting a $25 Walmart card, a $10 Amazon card, and a $10 Jimmy John's card for your troubles. Congratulations. Good luck, gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed today's class. It was obviously something a little different than what you usually do. Um, and I hope you had fun because, as I said, it wasn't really to teach today. It was for you guys to have a good time. Enjoy the rest of the semester. Thank you. And the key is... How do you apply these technology trends to a problem, okay?